Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem shortest distance after road additions query. The idea is that we are actually given sort of this representation of a graph. Well, minus this edge, you have to think of it as a directed graph. That's what unidirectional means in this context. We're given n nodes, that's going to be a parameter. If it's five, that means we're given nodes from zero all the way up until four. And for each node, like zero is going to point to one, it's going to have a directed edge to one, one is going to have a directed edge to two, and it's going to keep going like that until we get to the last node, which is not going to have like an outgoing edge. We're also given a list of queries, which each of these actually represents a directed edge. So this means that there's going to be a new edge introduced from two all the way to four. What we want to do is return an array the same size as the queries array. So we have three pairs here, like three edges. So we want to return an array with three values. What those values are gonna represent is after the introduction of this edge, what is the length of the shortest path from the zeroth node to the n minus one node? We already know originally without the introduction of that, it's going to be uh, pretty much n minus one. So we have five nodes. That means we had four edges. And so it takes four you know, jumps to get to the last node. But now with the introduction of the new one, what is the new shortest path? In this case, it happens to be one, two, and then three. And now after we answer that query, we're going to put three in the first position. Okay, now we add this edge as well. So now the graph is going to look uh, like this down here. Conveniently, they gave us these pictures, so I don't even have to draw them. But now with the introduction of this edge, what's the shortest distance to four? Well, it's not going to be taking this path, which takes two. We could cover that with just one jump like that. So that's one two. So we'd put two in the next spot. And then lastly, we'd introduce this edge from zero all the way to four. So in that case, it's just going to be one edge and we would return one in the last position. And then that's the entire output. And then that's going to be over here. Basically, I don't have to probably tell you that this is a graph problem. If you don't know what graphs are, then it's probably going to be difficult to solve this problem. So this is a graph problem. So it's probably going to require some graph algorithm. The fact that we're finding the shortest distance is a pretty big giveaway that among graph algorithms, there's two very popular ones. DFS is probably the most popular. And then second is a BFS. It's the second most common. BFS is generally more optimal for finding the shortest path. Now, if you know that BFS can find the shortest path, you'll be thinking, well, okay, how can we fit that into this solution? And the good thing is that actually even a brute force solution will work. In fact, I think the brute force solution is the optimal one. So that will work. Well, what would a brute force solution look like in the context of this problem? The size of the graph is going to be n. That's how many nodes are in the graph. And that's roughly how many edges are in the graph as well. In the worst case, though, like the last graph, it's going to be of size n plus q in terms of like the total number of nodes and edges. So that's like the size of the graph. So we could say that a graph traversal isn't going to be any worse than this, n plus q. So a brute force solution would involve running a BFS every time we update the graph and add a new edge to the graph. So how many times are we going to run the BFS? Well, q times. So we'll have q multiplied by n plus q. And I'll briefly cover how like the BFS algorithm works, but given how standard of an algorithm it is and how many times I've explained it before, and also the fact that I think there's like a million resources on Neatcode.io to learn it, whether you want to do it like the freeway by going through some of these graph problems, I believe walls and gates might be one. I think clone graph might be uh, one. In any case, like there's multiple solutions to these problems. More so, I think the algorithms for beginners course. In the course, if you head over to the adjacency list section, you have this pretty long lesson here, but you'll probably specifically be interested in not the DFS part, but the BFS on an adjacency list. And like there's some animations, there's a lot of notes on here, there's the code in several languages. 
So I think that's also a valuable uh, resource to learn BFS. The idea of BFS is sort of like a level order traversal. We'll go through every level. So initially, like with this graph, the first level is zero. Uh, so that's going to be in our queue. That's the data structure used for BFS. So then we're going to go through everything in the queue right now and go through all the neighbors of each node that we pop. So zero only has one neighbor. And we'll know that because we're going to convert the original graph into an adjacency list where we will map every node to a list of its neighbors. Zero will have one as a neighbor initially one will have um, just two as a neighbor initially, et cetera, et cetera. We know that we did introduce this new edge. So two will actually have two neighbors, three and four. So we'll have a mapping, just assume that we have that. But popping Q will now have the second level, which is one. And then popping one, we'll get to the next level, which is just two. And then after popping two, it actually has two neighbors, three and four. So now we'll be here. Once we pop uh, the four, we'll realize that we have reached the target because we are looking for the n minus one node, but we want to know how many steps it took to reach this position. So we will basically count one, two, three. You could count that in several different ways. I think the easiest way to reason about is when you add values to the queue, rather than just adding a single value, you can actually add a pair of values. The first will indicate the node, and the second will indicate the length that it took to reach that node. So initially, we'll actually have a pair, which is 0, 0. It took us 0 steps to reach the 0th node. Next, we will add 1, and it took us 1 step to reach that. How did we calculate the new length? We just take the previous length and add one to it every single time. So this is what the next level will be. And then the next level will be two, two. And then the next level will be a three, three, as well as four, three. So when we do pop this one, we will get the node and see that it's equal to the target. And then the length it took us was three. It took us three steps. So that's how we will get the result. That's all for the intuition. Let's code this up now. So I'm going to take full advantage of Python in today's video and do a little bit of list comprehension. We know that initially um, we could do something like this, like for i in range n, and then we could say adjacency dot append to it a list and all the neighbors of the ith node are just going to be i plus one. Like this list contains all the neighbors of the ith node and it's i plus one. We're doing them in order. We're going from zero all the way to n minus one. So we can just append to the list from left to right. That works, but if you want to be fancy like me and do a little list comprehension, you can check out my Python for Coding Interviews course, which will have a bunch of interactive lessons to teach you all these like Python tips and tricks. It's basically just going to be like this. We will rewrite that code that I had before like this for i in range n. So we get a little one-liner going. And then we will assume we have an algorithm which will give us the shortest path. We actually don't really need to pass in anything into this function. I'll have access to the adjacency list since it's declared right here at the same level. I don't need to pass in a source node. I could to make this more modular if I wanted to, but our BFS, which is the shortest path algorithm, is always going to start at the zeroth node, and the target is always going to be the n minus oneth node. So it doesn't really matter in this case. So I'll just write it like this, and then down uh, here. I'm going to build that result array. That's what I'm going to return. I can build it like this, going through every single query in the list of queries. I know that each query is actually a pair of values, a source destination pair, because the edges are directed. For this source node, I want to append to its list of neighbors this destination node. And then I want to run the shortest path algorithm. And then the result of that is going to give me the length from zero to the n minus one node. And then that length I want to append to the result now. So that's literally the entire code. You can see that most of the code is going to be in the BFS. So I guess I was wrong. It's not literally the entire code, but I hope you understand what I mean. So in here, it's going to be pretty standard. I've written this like a thousand times, so I'm kind of on autopilot here, but we're going to have a deck. I'm going to initialize the deck by appending the first pair, 0, 0. Don't forget that these represent the node and the length it took to reach that node. And then I'm going to say while my queue is non-empty, I'm going to pop from the queue from the left side of it. And I'm going to get two values, the current node and the length it took to reach the current node. Before we go through the neighbors of the current node, let's just check. Have we actually reached the target, n minus 1? If so, just return the length. If not, 
go through every neighbor in the current nodes list of neighbors. So just like this and go ahead and append the uh, neighbor. So we will add a tuple here. The first will be the node itself, which is the neighbor. And the second will be the length. What is the length going to be to reach this node? Well, if it took us this much to reach the current node, it's going to take us one more edge traversal to reach this node. So we can say length plus one. Now, there's actually one little thing that we're missing. We can't necessarily make any assumptions about the way the graph looks, because even though it started as an acyclical graph, after adding some queries, we might end up with a cycle, and that's not what we want to do. So we don't want to visit the same node multiple times. We only want to know what the shortest path it was to reach a certain node. We don't need every single path. We don't need to get stuck in like an infinite loop. So we will, to mitigate against that, declare a data structure up above. I'm going to call it visit. It's going to be specifically a hash set. And so when I have a node over here, before I append it to the queue, I just want to make sure it hasn't been visited. So if a neighbor is not in visit, then I'm going to append it to the queue. And I'm also at that point going to mark it as visited. We're almost done now. We don't need a return statement down here because we're guaranteed to reach uh, the target position. We know that there's always at least one valid path to it. Uh, but one thing is we are saying that we're going to mark a node visited once it's been added to the queue, not necessarily when it's been popped, because we'd never want to add the same node multiple times. We never want to end up popping the same node multiple times. So by the time that I add the node to the queue here, the zeroth node, I should probably also mark it visited just to be consistent. So I will do this. It won't work if you do not have this. At least there are some edge cases that won't work. There's the entire code. Let's give it a run. And of course, I had a very sloppy bug, forgot one of the key words in. Uh, but now you can see that the solution works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.